Hi kids, welcome to Building on the Rock. Today, we're continuing the story of Samuel, who has now since been given up to the Lord, having been raised enough by his mother to be able to survive without her. And we see that uh, after the curse, or, well, the replacement that uh, happens last week, Eli is... Uh, the grating fast, and Samuel is sleeping peacefully in his, in his home at the temple. We continue in uh, chapter 3. The boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli. In those days, the word of the, the, word of the Lord was rare. These were, there were not many visions. One night, Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak that they could barely see, was lying down in his usual place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, the, and Samuel was lying down in the house of the Lord, where the ark of God was, or the ark of the covenant. Then the Lord said, "Then the Lord called Samuel." Samuel answered, "Here I am." And he ran to Eli and said, "Here I am. You called me." But Eli said, "I did not call. Go back, go back and lie down." So he went and lay down. Again the Lord called Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. My son, Eli said, I did not call. Go back and lie down. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. The word of the Lord had not been revealed not yet been revealed to him. A third time the Lord called Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. Then Eli realized the Lord was calling the boy. So Eli told Samuel, Go and lie down. And if he calls you, say, Speak, Lord, and your servant is list for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and laid down in his place. The Lord came and stood there, calling as at the other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. And the Lord said to Samuel, See, I am about to do something in Israel that will make the ears of everyone who hears about it tingle. At the time I will carry out against Eli everything I spoke against his family from beginning to end. For I told him that I would judge his family forever because of the sin he knew about. His sons blasphemed God, and he failed to restrain them. Therefore I swore to the house of Eli, the guilt of Eli's house will never be atoned for by sacrifice or offering. Samuel laid down, Samuel laid down until morning, and then opened the doors of the house of the Lord. He was afraid to tell Eli the vision, but Eli called him and said, Samuel, my son. Samuel answered, Here I am. What, what was it he said to you? Eli asked. Do not hide it from me. May God deal with you, be it ever so severely, if you hide from, any, hide from me anything he told you. So Samuel told him everything, hiding nothing from him. Then Eli said, He is the Lord. Let him do what is good in his eyes. The Lord was with Samuel as he grew up, and he let none of Samuel's words fall to the ground. And all of Israel, from Dan to Beersheba, recognized that Samuel was attested as a prophet of the Lord. The Lord continued to appear at Shiloh, and there he revealed himself to Samuel through his word. This story is important to me specifically because it relates to my calling. When I was uh, a young boy, around your, around your age maybe, I was uh, upstairs in, in uh, my little room with, where me and my brother played with Legos. But uh, it was about dinner time. And uh, I was just playing by myself because I was young and I still liked Legos like I did then. And then I uh, heard down the stairs, which were right in my path, that Joseph, Joseph. And I went downstairs because I thought it was dinner time. And I went to my mom I and mean, I said, here I am, uh, where's dinner? Something to that effect. The memory is a little foggy in that regard. And uh, then she said, dinner's not ready yet, and I didn't call you. And I was like, okay. I stayed there for a bit, and then she said I could go upstairs to play with Legos, and so I did. And then I went to play with Legos for about uh, 30 seconds, and then I heard her call again. So I went downstairs, and uh, she said, dinner's still not ready, and I didn't call you. Now at this point, it should be noted that my brother wasn't playing Legos upstairs with me. 
he was my older brother, and uh, he was there in the kitchen with my mom, spending time with her, and possibly helping her cook. And so, he, being named Samuel, knew the story of Samuel to at least some regard, and knew about this story specifically. And he said to me, the next time you hear that call, say, here I am, Lord, how may I serve you? And so, as I'm walking out of the room, and I get to the stairs, I take one step up and I hear, Joseph, Joseph, I get on my knees on the stairway, a bit fumbly, I admit, and I said, here I am, Lord, what do you want? And then he said, as a blinding light shone above me, said that I will live the 78s and I'm going to be a pastor. I just said, okay, and told my mom and my brother, with my dad not home yet. And they were amazed. And I didn't understand it at the time, honestly. It just seemed like, well, I heard about these sorts of things in Bible studies. I mean, I don't understand the specialness of this. But you see... The great thing about that story, to me, is not simply what I did or the fact that I got given a blessing to know when I'm going to die and what I should do to serve the Lord, which I am still seeking to this day. It's how my family reacted. My brother held that as a jealous thought for years that I got given that blessing and he didn't. And it was only a couple of years ago, that he realized that he was not less blessed than I. Because he still had a purpose in God's great plan. I just wouldn't have known what my purpose was if he didn't tell me. My brother, he's a tech guy. And uh, he told me a couple of years ago now that he's going to get out of college make enough money to sustain himself, and then work as a tech person for churches around the world to help them reach out and set up live streams. And this was before COVID, so now it's gained a lot more purpose because people are afraid to go outside. And I was so happy for him. I was honestly happier for him than I ever was for my calling. Because once you know what God is asking of you, it's not a matter of what to do, it's a matter of are you going to do it. Now I don't expect you, my young friends, to have that special blinded light calling. But if you do, I'm happy for you. Just know that when you feel that burning in your heart, that shaking in your legs that says do something, and you're afraid... God is calling you to act in a moment, in an instant. And what you do could change the world. People may not remember you doing it, but if they do, always remember that God is, will ask you to do the hard things. And when he does, you will be ready. I hope you have a wonderful week this week. We have a uh, little lamp of God here to represent the one that wasn't yet burned out. And uh, three little candles represent the different callings of Samuel. It'll be a nice, fun little build, and I uh, hope you enjoy it. So, to begin, we're going to grab two one by sixes, attach them over here, like so. Then, we are going to attach these uh, two two by threes right here with the two stud gap in the middle. And once we're there, attach this uh, light gray two by two right there. Now, we're going to attach this here one by two by four little uh, light gray piece and these clear one by twos. We shall then attach three separate little uh, circular two by twos, right? So, where there's a one stud gap between them, and 
Then we attach this here red piece and these uh, here. Two sloped to the side, two by ones, one by twos, and these two sloped to the other side, two by one, one by twos. And uh, point those outward, like so, and you got yourself a nice little cackling fire. Now, attach these more one by twos in the clear variety, right there, and these here, uh, brick shaped two by twos on top of the uh, round ones. Now, we attach these uh, sloped clear two by twos on top of the fire and attach these two two by twos on top of these little candles or torches and this slanted, no, sorry, cut, you know, and uh, these slanted two by twos like so. They're the same piece as used on the other fire, just on this torch. Now, we attach these final clear 2 by 2s on top to make our lamp with a little oxygen hole. And this here torch finishes with a sloped the other way 2 by 2 Now, you can see this, and you might be wondering, how does that relate to the lesson? Well, you see, this here is the lamp of God that wasn't yet burned out. You, you light one at the evening and it burns throughout the night and it wasn't yet burned out. So God was still in the presence. He wasn't sleeping. And here is uh, three little torches to keep it lit where you would take a torch, light it, and then naturally activate the uh, lamp. And it represents the three separate times Samuel responded to uh, God calling him without recognizing it was God. I uh, hope you have a wonderful week, and I'll see you again soon.